Hi everyone, welcome to week two's lecture and uh, we will be talking about chapters four through six of uh, Strayer's Ways of the World today. Um, so thanks for joining me and if you again haven't already, um, go ahead and uh, print out your um, chapter learning objectives, um, be able to take down some notes on what I would like for you to focus on while you're reading and, um, and then we will uh, go ahead and get started. Again, let me say a quick prayer. Father, thank you for uh, the time I have with these students. Pray your blessing upon them. Pray that you would help them to learn and understand. Pray that you would help them to think wisely about the material, um, be able to um, understand and see the connections. Ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, uh, if you remember from last week, we were finishing up talking about um, some of the first major world civilizations. And today, we actually move into um, their, their full-blown establishment as civilizations, as empires. And um, I find this time period very exciting because it is, uh, it's probably one of the areas of history that I am more familiar with and uh, uh, Rome and Greece and uh, in early days of China and um, so so I find this time period very exciting but with that um, let me go ahead and share a couple of the uh, learning objectives for you for ch from chapter four as we look at these different uh, empires and um, as you read them in your textbook a couple of the things um, besides what's already listed on your uh, on your outline. A couple other things that I want you to focus on are, are these. Um, I want you to be able to show the important similarities and differences between the imperial systems and the reasons behind them. A, uh, Strayer's going to talk about four or five, um, excuse me, it's four different empires. Um, and he's going to very clearly go through and, and talk about similarities between them and differences between them. So go ahead and pay attention to those. And then uh, one of the major reasons I love history, any type of history, is because of its relevance to today. And most of you may be thinking, okay, really, like 2,500 years ago, what influence does it have today? But... Um, History, history builds on itself, um, and, and, and you can trace different ideas, different movements, different people groups um, throughout history. And so one of the other learning objectives I want you to focus on um, to, to write this down is to reflect on the significance that some of these classical empires have on our world today. And I think that will be a very beneficial task for you just as you're reading um, different things that you you know have maybe heard about or thought about um, how these empires and these people continue to make an impact um, on our world today okay well the four uh, empires and civilizations that Strayer will talk about in this chapter are the Persian Empire the Greek or um, yeah, the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, and uh, China. And he will look at uh, all four of them. He will explore how they came to be. Um, and again, he will talk about the similarities and the differences between them. And um, so I, I think that you'll enjoy this chapter very much as you look at those, um, those differing perspectives. Um, I want you to just to pay attention to how did they grow, um, why did they rise in certain areas, um, what caused them to consolidate, and then also uh, what, what led to their decline. Um, again, and more of those similarities and differences, um, but these are, these are major empires. And um, as you can see from this map here, I mean, the Persian Empire covered a vast, vast amount of land. And uh, how, did, how did they consolidate their power? How did they hold on to it? And then um, what eventually led to their decline? And um, so pay attention to all of those things as you're reading. And, uh, and I, 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 as I said, I think you'll enjoy um, this particular chapter.
Okay, um, next thing that he's going to look at is he'll continue to focus on um, those particular chapters, um, but, uh, excuse me, those particular empires. However, he's going to look specifically at um, the religious cultural tradition within each of them. Um, some of the learning objectives that I want you to focus on, um, the first one there I'd like you to write down on your outline is um, I want you to be able to point out the influence that these religious and cultural traditions developed. Okay, these, uh, during this time period that he will explore, there will be major world religions uh, that are still very influential today, um, not just uh, religiously, but also culturally. Uh, you know, how did Christianity change the West? How did Buddhism change the East or Hinduism change India? Um, so those are some of the things that I want you to focus on. And then I also want you to pay attention to um, uh, the differing, well, I want you to pay attention to how Strayer uh, talks about these religions. Um, did they have common ground? Were they radically different? Um, he talks about how they were all searching for a social order and, um, and a purpose for existence. And I want you to pay attention to how exactly um, those, you know, what are, what's the common ground and what are the significant differences between these religious and cultural traditions. And, and definitely keep that in mind. Um, Strayer is not coming from a, again, a Christian perspective. Um, and so he, he offers a very unique perspective. Um, and I want you to be able to um, analyze his perspective. Um, I don't think that just because he has written a textbook that he is 100% accurate on all things. Um, so I want you to be able to, to try and learn to discern um, what is right and what is just his perspective and be able to, uh, to pay attention to that as you're going through uh, the readings from, from this chapter. These are three of the major areas that he'll look at, look at excuse me, in chapter, um, in chapter five. Hey, China uh, and the search for order. Um, he'll talk about Confucianism and Buddhism. Um, He'll talk about the cultural traditions of, of India um, and Hinduism and how, um, how Hinduism began and was spread from India. And then he will also look at, at the more Western tradition of um, some of the monotheistic faiths. Again, at this time, um, he's referring specifically to uh, Judaism and even to some of the earlier uh, parts of Christianity. Um, so again, pay attention to uh, what, why each of these different areas um, kind of came up with a different answer for social order and, um, and how they uh, continued to spread that um, throughout the world. And that will be your focus uh, for chapter six, uh, excuse me, for chapter five. Okay, and then in chapter six, he's going to look at, again, all of these different empires, and he's going to look at their, basically their social life, their hierarchy. Um, so for your learning objectives, I want you to be able to uh, explore social structures in classical Eurasia. And I also want you to focus on um, considering what made social structures different in different uh, civilizations. Okay, he's going to talk about China, India, Rome, Greece. How are those How are those societal organizations dissimilar? Um, how are they different? Okay, not only the how, but I also want you to see if you can try and, and come up with some of the answers to the questions of why. Why were these areas different. Um, again, uh, I want you to, to think about the connection to the modern world. Um, are there, are there uh, connections 
uh, between the way that classical China treated its people and the way it treats them now. Um, same thing in India, same thing in the West, uh, in the Western Empire. Um, again, always want you to try and pay attention to uh, connections between the old world and the new. So um, those are some of the things that you can focus on in, um, in chapter six. And uh, I actually already mentioned all of this, so uh, if you want to jot it down real quick, uh, if you are taking notes, um, okay, social society in the major empires, each of them, uh, each of them is different. Uh, there are some similarities, and uh, I want you to be able to, to focus on those, uh, be able to give kind of an explanation on, uh, on why some of them are different, uh, and again, focus on the... Um, focus on the, the connections to today and some of the kind of the major ideas that come out of out of this classical time period. So I hope by the end of this week's reading you'll be able to uh, have a very good working understanding of each of the major empires, um, uh, China, India, Rome, and Greece. Uh, you'll be able to understand uh, how they came to be, how they consolidated power, how they declined, um, you'll be able to look at their, their social and their religious makings as well. And uh, so, so this week's reading is all intensive about, about the different empires, but I think that you will you really enjoy this uh, time period. So um, go ahead and dive into your reading, and uh, I look forward to hearing your thoughts on it and, uh, and seeing your work. So with that, uh, good luck, God bless, and we'll see you next week.